Hi, this is Story Wilson, and we've got a desktop recording of the EAS Calibrate software. And today I'm going to show you how to use it, how to recalibrate your air suspension. First, though, I need to tell you that the recalibration procedure can be used for two primary functions. One is if you're replacing a broken EAS sensor, that sensor will need to be recalibrated in that the EAS microcontroller will need to know for any given sensor position what the actual physical height is. And this program will allow you to do that. The other position, which is probably the other use, which is probably more popular, is to recalibrate the different ride heights. You know, the rover has four different ride heights, the access, low, standard, and high profile settings. And this can be a risky endeavor because the OEM, the stock Range Rover suspension, has been set up to pretty much utilize all of its travel. And if you go in with a stock suspension and start modifying the ride heights, you can seriously damage your suspension components. And I'll tell you what you'll, you'll damage. Specifically, you will damage the airbags and you will damage the shock absorbers because your airbags have a limited amount of travel and as to your shock absorbers. And if you exceed that travel, that design travel, they'll break. They'll break and you'll end up costing yourself a lot of money in the down, um, down the road. In addition to that, the Range Rover suspension really shouldn't be recalibrated for different heights because it's not really terribly safe at higher heights. You know, there's a reason why that profile says highway profile and when you can't go over a certain speed of the extended profile. Those are the reasons why those tolerances are built in there. And you should be really careful. I really must stress to be very careful not doing anything that's going to damage your suspension and certainly not doing anything that's going to put your life at risk or make your rover any you know, less safe to drive. So we start like we normally do with these programs. We choose the COM port. And for this, we're on COM port 4. We begin the initialization sequence. You see beginning communication happening. It'll power cycle. And then we'll have the idling commands going. So we have a proper idling commands being sent out and being received back. We're synchronized, and we're ready to go. You all should know by now, though, if you see anything in the receive buffer other than FF, you failed to synchronize, and you need to redo the entire operation. Power cycle the program, unplug all the uh, all the cables, power cycle the car, start again. So we're going to retrieve each of the stored height profiles from the EAS. What you're going to see is a series of four numbers for each height profile, front and rear. Now mine are very, very, very similar. And I usually don't see that. Usually there's slight variations. You'll notice on mine, the fronts are always the same, the rears are always the same you can expect to see slight variations, one or two point differences. So the upper grid of numbers are the actual heights that are stored in your EAS. The bottom grid is where you'll actually change these values and commit them. Now be before you do that, it's important to get kind of a baseline for the stored height profiles. And the way I do that is I'll get a piece of paper and I'll write each of these numbers down have four rows, high, standard, low, and access, and write each of these numbers down. Write those down, tuck it away, put it in your glove box, keep them, you know, keep them handy. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually click each of these buttons one by one, send the car to access profile, and measure the actual physical height. You measure from the center of the wheel to the center of the wheel arch, and do that for each of the settings. So when you have this written down, write down next to it that 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 access profile is X number of inches or X number of centimeters. Go to the next profile, low profile, do the same thing. Get outside your vehicle, measure the actual physical height. Do it for standard and high. Each time you click this button, the suspension will actually go to that stored profile. So this is giving you a good baseline, okay? Now, if you want to go down, let's say you've got upgraded suspension, upgraded shock absorbers, you've got larger tires. In that case, that's what I have. So what you're going to do, let's start with the high profile for example. So here are the stored heights, 154, 154, 135, 135. And let's change this by just a couple of points. Let's change this by two points apiece, 156, 156, 137, 137. And you'll commit that change by hitting the right button. And that only writes the high profile memory locations. Check over here, they've already been written. Now we're going to go back up to the top and we're going to retrieve those stored heights to make sure they're actually committed properly. And there they are, 156, 156, 
one through seven, one through seven. Now finally, we'll actually go to that new height profile. You hit the high profile button, your car will rise to the new setting, go outside and take your measurements again. Take your measurements, write it down, and so you know that a change in two or three points will equal you know, X number of centimeters or inches change in height, the actual physical height. And that's how you can recalibrate your air suspension by relating the actual physical reality of the sensor position or the, the suspension height to these numbers. And that's pretty much it. Take a methodical, careful, and slow planned approach to doing this. Don't guess. Only make changes that you know will have the effect you desire. Don't just guess. And please, stress this overall. Be extremely careful. Do not damage your suspension. And ask questions if you have them. Thanks. Real quick, I also forgot to uh, go over a couple points. So when you retrieve each of the values one by one or, or all at once, you need to make sure that you do not have any values in here that read 255. Any value of 255 is not a correct uh, stored height. And what's happened in, uh, is that the FF value from the receive buffer has accidentally been slipped in here. And if that happens, just get the value again. Simple as that.